Sweden and Poland may be neighbors to each other that are separated by the Baltic Sea. And much like how England is a neighbor to France, they do have a history that has had many run-ins with each other. But what are the major differences between these two great nations? Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to FTD Facts, the channel where I look at different countries, cultures, and peoples and places from all around the world. Now, my name's Dave Wobble, and if it's your first time here, you want to hit that subscribe button, because if you like learning about countries, that's what we do. And on top of that, before we get into this episode, because we're going to dive right into it, if you guys are liking this sort of video and you want more of the differences between different countries or you want more topics around Sweden or Poland, be sure to hit those like buttons because that's a good indication of the kind of stuff that you guys want. Or you could just let us know down there in the comment section below. Either or, it's cool. Now, one of the reasons why I'm talking about these two particular countries and finding out the differences between them is, first of all, we've done uh, which countries are better videos back in the day, and I just felt, you know what, we should look more at the cultural differences between these two countries and not necessarily say which country is better, but just to discover what's different about them. And, of course, just the fact that I've had a lot of people watch the Sweden videos that I've done and the Poland videos that I've done, and I'm really grateful for that, so this is kind of like a combination. So let's start it off. So two separate countries. You have Poland, which is a Slavic country and is located in Central Europe. Now for Sweden, it's a little bit tricky to classify where it is because for some people they call it Northern Europe, but most people actually just call it Scandinavia. And Sweden is known as a Scandinavian country. However, I do also want to mention that there are some similarities between these two countries, so we're going to talk about differences and similarities. And the first big one of that is the fact that both of these countries are part of the EU, the European Union. Because for Sweden, it joined the EU in 1994, and Poland joined 10 years later on May 1st of 2004. But one really interesting thing that I find that is a similarity between these two nations is that although they are both part of the European Union, they both also don't use the euro as their main currency. Poland uses a currency which is known as the Polis Zolte, and as for Sweden, their currency is called the Swedish Krona. Also, for both of these nations, when it comes to their particular individual currency, I find it really useful that they actually used colored money. Now, of course, some countries will also say, oh, well, you know, that's like monopoly money. It's, you know, a joke money. I'm not going to name those nations that actually, you know, say that. But let's be perfectly honest. For me, I find it really helpful because it's an easy way to determine the different types of bills just by looking at it. You know, you can go, oh, look, that's a 20. Oh, that's a 100. Oh, that's a 50. Oh, that's a 30. I don't think they have $30 bills, but you get what I mean. Either way, let's talk about population. Poland obviously has a larger population coming in with an approximation of 38,433,600 people. Sweden being to the north and obviously having a rougher climate has a population of 10,207,086 people approximately. And considering we're on the topic of people, let's look at things like religion, language, and all that sort of jazz. Because for these two countries, when it comes to their religion that is a majority, they are quite different. For example, in Poland, the majority of people identify as Roman Catholic, being about 87%. But within Sweden, the biggest religion in the country is Christian, more specifically known as the Church of Sweden, which is a Lutheran form of Christianity. Of course, there are other religions within this country, and there are people who also don't identify as a religion as well. But when it comes to languages, the one thing that's really cool about these two countries is they both have their own language that's named after their country. Of course, in Sweden, everybody knows that the main language there is Swedish, and in Poland, it's Polish. But the amount of people that actually speak English within these two countries does vary quite a bit. For example, in Sweden in 2005, it was reported that 89% of the people are able to speak English. But however, in 2015 within Poland, it was stated that only about 50% of the people can speak English. Now, jumping over to land. Now, Poland is a pretty big country, and Sweden is as well. Poland has a land size of 312,696 kilometers square, with approximately 3.07% of that being water. Sweden's land comes in at 450,295 square kilometers, with a water percentage of 8.7%, and it's also the fifth largest country within Europe. Of course, of this land, one thing that we cannot forget to mention is that in both countries, they actually have a lot of forests. For example, Poland is the fourth largest forested country in all of Europe, with about 30% of its land covered in forest. 
It should also be mentioned that the forest to the northern area is an extremely important one and is also considered a world heritage site because this forest is the last and largest primeval forest on the entire planet. But however, in Sweden, it is a lot higher when it comes to forests within the country because they say that at least 70% of its land is covered in heavy forests. I always thought that was pretty interesting. It's a very green country. Jumping right along, let's take a look at some of the human aspects. Let's talk about the government of these two nations. Poland is what is known as a unitary semi-presidential representative democratic republic, meaning that there is a president that is the head of state and the armed forces, and the prime minister is head of the government. Within this government, they have two chambers of parliament known as the Senate and the Siem. And as for the presidential elections, they are a little bit different from Sweden because they happen every five years. Overall, executive power of the country is worked through what is known as a multi-platform party system, and that has worked with the president and the council members, which is led by the prime minister. Jumping over to Sweden, it is a parliamentary, representative, democratic, constitutional monarchy. Basically meaning that they still have a king and a queen, and these people, they don't need to be elected, they go off of family blood. However, it should also be mentioned that the country does also have a prime minister, and this form of government also works in a multi-party system. And for them, when they do elections for their prime minister, it happens every four years. And for the armed forces commander in chief, it is actually not given to one individual man or woman, but is given to the cabinet for the prime minister. And in this current state, it is known as the Lofen after prime minister Stephen Lofen. As well, the cabinet for the prime minister acts as caretakers for the government. Culinary, let's talk about food. Food is important. You love food, I love food, we all love food, but the food in these two countries is a little bit different. Although they do have some similar aspects in their culinary, and lightly they have also adopted American style food, Poland is generally traditionally known for things like sausages to be very popular. And for them, their sausages are called kebasa. I don't know if that's how you actually pronounce it in Polish, but in Canada, that's how we pronounce it. We call it kebasa. But did you also know that bagels originated from Poland, and one of the most popular dishes that comes from the country is pierogies? Oh yeah, and I love pierogies, mm-hmm. Sweden, they are also known for many other different things. One food in the northern regions that they are known for is eating reindeer. But for Sweden, the most international food that they are known for is Swedish meatballs. Like, there's literally a million jokes about Swedish meatballs out there in the real world. It's crazy. These meatballs are served with gravy, and in other countries around the world, it's usually something that you get around Christmas. Also, speaking about Christmas, when it comes to Sweden, they have what is known as the smorgasbord, which is kind of like a mini buffet of food. Basically, you get things like cheese, bread, meatballs, fish, and other meats, boiled potatoes, and other things of that nature. Of course, we should also mention that if we're going to talk about Christmas dishes, Poland has their own sort of individual dishes. Basically, they also have a Christmas supper, which is known as Wigilia. I think that's how you pronounce it. However, it's traditionally a meatless meal where you have borscht and small dumplings. And considering we mentioned Christmas, let's just talk about some of the rest of the holidays within these two nations and what makes them different. For Sweden, it has 11 public holidays and Poland actually beats them by having 13. Of course, they do have similarities, like I mentioned Christmas, they also have Easter, they have multiple Independence Days or Culture Country Appreciation Days. They also both celebrate Epiphany, which happens on January 6th. And oddly enough, both countries do celebrate All Saints Day, which is November 1st. I don't know if they really celebrate Halloween in those countries, but All Saints Day at least is celebrated. But for Sweden, one major holiday that is definitely different and is their own is known as Midsummer's Day, which is a day to celebrate the summer solstice. Now, I've actually heard that other countries do celebrate this and even countries like Poland celebrate it, but Sweden has a very unique way of celebrating this particular holiday. And it seems to be that the way they do it in Sweden is more internationally known as during this holiday, people raise what is known as the Maypole and dance around it. Also, it is a time where one decorates their house in greenery and it's supposed to bring good luck through the season. Poland, however, has one really interesting holiday. It's also a shared holiday that happens on August 15th. It's literally two holidays in one. Known most commonly as the Armed Forces Day, it's also shared with the Day of Assumption of the Virgin Mary. 
which of course is a Catholic holiday. But for Armed Forces Day, it's a very particular Polish holiday because it commemorates the 1920 victory against the Russians during the Battle of Warsaw. I also find this holiday to be very significantly important within Poland because in 1947, that is when the Soviet Union took control of Poland and they pretty much banned this holiday from being celebrated until 1992 when the Soviet Union dissolved and collapsed. Speaking of history, I do want to mention one major difference between these two countries is their history during the Second World War. It's quite different. And because of that, you got to keep in mind that things that happened in the past also change how people are in the present day. Because for Poland, it has had a major history of oppression. For example, during the Second World War, Poland was a country that was completely invaded by the Germans on September 1st, 1939, which started the beginning of World War II. Of course, they were the ones that attacked from the West, but oddly enough, the Soviets also attacked from the East. As well, Poland had a major turbulent history when the Nazis ended up placing Auschwitz and other concentration camps within the country, which was basically the beginning of the Holocaust, and we all know the history of that. I don't need to go into that. And what's even more unfortunate for Poland, and I mean, some people might agree, some people might disagree, is that after the war, Poland was pretty much consumed by the Soviet Union, and they really just didn't get their independence, which I feel like they actually deserved. Sweden, however, on September 1st, had actually announced its neutrality during the war, partially due to the fact that Sweden had not been in a war since 1815 and it was part of their policy to just stay out of wars altogether. Also, it's interesting to know that out of the 20 countries that declared themselves neutral, only eight of them could actually do so, and Sweden was one of them. However, Sweden also became a major refugee center for the Jewish people coming from Denmark. And they say during the war, about 8,000 Jews fled from Denmark safely to Sweden. And last but not least, just to leave it on a really happy note, let's talk about music because these two countries have contributed a lot in history to music. Poland has actually had a very crazy history of musicians, especially during the classical era around the 17 to 1800s. For example, one of my favorite classical composers is Chaplin. He's from Poland. On top of that, Poland produced over a dozen other classical composers, and it's probably due to the fact that during that time, Poland was a major hub for music, just kind of like Sweden is today. It also should be mentioned that even since its creation in the 1980s, metal, death metal, and goth metal seem to be extremely popular music in the country, even beating hip-hop and alternative music altogether. Sweden also has a lot of world-famous musicians, like bands like ABBA, which is also one of the world's most prominent and best-selling bands. They also had bands like Europe, Roxette, and Ace of Bass that originated from the country, and that's probably due to the fact that in the modern world, Sweden has been a major contributor to music. And actually, in the whole world, they are the third largest producers of music out of any country in the world. And as a matter of fact, in 2015, Sweden ranked number one for having the most chart hits per capita. Either way, that is just a small look at the differences between these two great nations. My name is Dave Wapple, and I just want to know, did we miss any differences between these two countries? If you guys are from these two different countries, be sure to let us know some cultural things that we missed that you might want to throw in there. Because, hey, man, if you guys like this, maybe we'll do a part two. But other than that, hope you guys really like this. Hit that subscribe button. Also, hit those like buttons for that part two. And and I will see you in the next one. Bye. All right, by the way, before you guys get out of here, be sure to check out our country's playlist because this is a really cool playlist we can learn about different countries from around the world. Specifically this one where we're talking about Europe. On top of that, be sure to check out our what if playlist where we look at what would happen if two nations actually combined. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.